Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear this morning. Let's take a look at our weather brought to us by Drew Pollard's company, Gulf Coast Air Conditioning up there in Southport. We're looking at a high today, folks, of 70. I know it's February, but high of 70 and low all the way down to 63, so not much temperature change. We've got some wind coming, We've got some rain coming in tonight. I don't know how long it's going to last. It's sort of iffy for the weekend, but I'm going to be on the optimistic side. We're going to we're going to hope the rain gets in and gets on out of here, but it's going to be windy now. The wind today is going to be blowing out of southeast almost at 20, and that, that's strong. Our river readings, take a look at Appalachian Coal at Bluntstown. We're looking at actually a 6.6, .6, level it off right there, and also the Choctahatchee level off at a 6.2, so they're, they're reading about the same this morning. Now, the temp Gulf water temperature, I've got it right now at a 58.5, and it's been hanging in there at 58.5. But in a couple of weeks, it's going to start going up. It's going to be neat watching that. You know, we enjoy watching that every year, watching the water temperature. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Take a look at it. Uh, we got a strong, let's see, today is February the 3rd. We're looking at a strong tide today. Tomorrow and Saturday, not much of a tide. And not much of a tide on through Sunday and Monday, too. But uh, next weekend is going to be a really strong tide. But that'll be February the 12th. And while I'm talking about February 12th, two days later will be February the 14th. And you know what that is. That's Valentine's Day. Very special time for you guys to uh, uh, get something special for your sweethearts. And uh, I, nowhere better they'd rather ha have, nothing better rather have than uh, some item from the Panhandle Outdoor Shop. And that's why Travis is putting on a sale of 10% off for the February 14th Valentine's Day sale is what he's calling it. And also, if you're going to pick it up at the shop at his house there, it's going to be 15% off. So that's a good deal there. We'll talk more about it and, uh, and uh, encourage you to do that. Okay? As I said, that takes care of all the weather. Like I say, it's going to be a windy day and rain coming in tonight. So be aware of that. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. You know, always talking about state park system. We're so proud of it, and so we just we're so glad to have so many here in the Panhandle. We have them all over Florida, but we've got a great selection here. And the person in charge, I mentioned this a couple of times, uh, in, of the state park system in Florida is a, what we call one of our local boys. Check this out. This is Chuck Hatcher. Uh, that's Chuck up there on the left. He's acting. He's the uh, acting director right now. But he wrote a nice letter, a letter right there, basically what he's saying, you know, just take uh, 50 years ago, Florida was one of the leaders, actually, in, uh, in the state park system that actually, uh, they, put, they started doing fires and all. The first prescribed fire, I didn't know this, was right there in the center, was at a Falling Water State Park in Chipley, the first prescribed fire in, in 50 years ago. And we sort of pioneers and... And we have, a, you know, the straight park system does a good job of this. So he's glad, glad to have a local boy over there, Chuck Hatcher, up there in Jackson County around Dellwood. Now, he's kin to Travis Bassford. they cousins or something like that. they they all kin to each other up there. <laughs> but I'm glad, glad to have him. But anyway, we're talking about, you know, I got to, after I read that, I was talking about the prescribed burns. I just wanted to uh, just quickly talk about it because it's so important to our environment. This is uh, this is Forest Service does them, and, and uh, they, well, they, this is called, when they light them up, it's called a drip torch. A drip torch, and this is how they light them up, and a lot of people don't know how they get started. And you light them up like that, and then, of course, you have that big burn, and this is, uh, this is a back, what they call a backfire. They're burning, they're burning a backfire. This is Forest Service burning a backfire to control the, the burn that's coming toward them. And, and we know, we know uh, I, I want to mention that, the, the advantages of a controlled burn, I wrote down three or four. We, we're in a position up here in Panhandle where all the trees are falling down. It's so combustible, and especially if we go through a dry period. Right now, we're okay because everything's pretty wet. But these prescribed burns, what it, first of all, if you do that, then it controls it controls the undergrowth. It takes away all that dead stuff, and it controls the heat because it, you know everything laying down like that. 
you can do it. You re we some places now you can't do a controlled burn here in the Panhandle. I also wrote down uh, it, it it proves the accessibility. I could use that in my place and have some room to get around all the trees and all. But uh, the back burning is important. Like the fire's coming this way, spreading. They can start a backfire here and sort of go toward it and then burn the fuel out so it won't spread to the houses. And uh, that's the old saying, you fight fire with fire, that comes from an old forest service practice of doing that many years ago, we fight fire with fire. So that's where that comes from. Also, uh, you know, you look at the situation, you see the California fires every year and, and all the foresters, I've talked to foresters and I've talked to uh, some people that really know, and they, every one of them said the same thing. They don't have those controlled burns out there because environmentalists don't think it's good. In reality, uh, it is. I remember in 97 or 98, there, we had some fires here on, in southeast Florida on a, around I-95, and it got out of control, and it had some bad accidents. And all. If you remember that, it was a little while back. But the reason, they, they just didn't, that had, the folks down there had been complaining. This is around Pomp uh, Palm Beach and Pompano Beach and Fort Lauderdale. And, the people complained that smoke was getting, you know, was bothering them, so they quit doing prescribed burns. And then when they didn't have a lightning fire, that's what happened. So these burns and all are important. I just want to share that with you. Uh, along the same uh, situation with state parks and all, the Billy Joe Rich Park over here on Cape San Blas is getting ready to open. This is a big deal. Check this out. This is effective January 31st, and it just happened. The Billy Joe Rich Recreation Area is open for access to the beach and bay. Okay, this is for, uh, this is for the, uh, it's right there in the middle really of the park. It's a hundred acres and it's open uh, Wednesday through Sunday. And that's where they're gonna sort of phase it in, you know, for the disabled or the challenged ones. I've been to that park, I have to work that park some, but it's a great park. Uh, here, I wanna show you, here it is, right here in the middle of the Cape. Folks, that's a hundred acres there, is that not cool? Like I said, I've been there. Uh, let me let me zero in on it. Uh, you can't got little cabins in it. It's a uh, beach and bay. And don't tell anybody any secrets, but I I enjoy sort of surf fishing in that area. And look how much bay. But anyway, that's opening back up. It's open now, and we're thankful for that. And while we're down there at the Cape, uh, let's get, uh, go ahead and finish up on it again. I talked about this yesterday. There's some really good stuff coming on Bay Day, and it's coming uh, Saturday. This coming Saturday, we talked about it yesterday, and we're hoping the weather holds out. But anyway, there's a, that's more, uh, Eastern time when the tram ride goes through the woods and all. And thank you, Deb and Marta Crumnocker, for letting us know about it. We hope to be there, okay? All right, let's go ahead and uh, take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Hey, listen, this is cool. While we're talking about, uh, you know, the state park system and all, and all the things going on with it, this past Monday was Jeff's birthday. And you know, the, your birthday is the day that you get to do what you want to do. And that's the way it should always ha have been and will be and should be. It's just your day. So what does Jeff do on his birthday? He just loads up his wife, Kim, and his son, Dominic, and they go to state parks. He, now, he hit it cool. He made a loop now. Went up the road to Chipley, to Fallen Water State Park, spent some time there, then swung around to Three Rivers Park, up there around Sneeds. He looked for Billy Grantham, but he couldn't find Billy. And then he came from, from Sneeds and went on over there toward north of Bristol to Toreal State Park. Now, ain't that a great way to spend a birthday? As Jeff being a true member of the Panhandle Outdoors team, using the outdoors like that. So y'all would think about doing stuff like that. And then he, he was just talking about it. There were not very many people on the weekdays, especially this time of year. There are not a lot of people there, so you really sort of get some elbow room and all. Keep that in mind. Something else to keep in mind. Got this uh, message last night. They wanted me to talk about. Here's what's coming up. The Holmes Creek Longspurs National Wild Turkey Federation. The banquet is March the 5th. That's about a month, one month from now. And doors open at 5.30. It's going to be at Holmes County High School up there in Bonifee. And contact Matthew Grantham. There's the phone number right there for tickets, or you can log on right there. So we're really proud of those guys up there and girls are putting on this banquet. They all work hard on this. And Holmes County's got a special turkey population, and it's important. So that's good news there. Let's go to something that's not good news. <laughs> you know, most of the stuff we talk about is good stuff. I got a 
situation here, uh, the person I know, one of our viewers, sent me a text the other day, and I, I wasn't going to put it on. I just, I just think we need to be aware of it. And uh, uh, this, this guy's been, he's been feeding his, he's been feeding him out his feeder for four months. And I said, what's going on? He said, neighbor is all over my feeder looking around for tracks and has his stand so he can see my feeder. Folks, this is, uh, you know, and so he sent me a picture, okay? He's standing at his feeder, and that's his neighbor stand uh, looking toward his feeder. You just don't do this. And, it, I, you know, I, it's just, you don't, you don't put stands on the edge of a property facing your neighbors and all that. It's really disappointing uh, to hear that, but it, it happens. But we try to, try to do, uh, well, let me share this story. I wasn't going to share this story either with you. I had the same situation this year. But to, let me prep, preface what's going on. I had my, my go-to stand set up years ago. I've had that property since 96. And so I was pretty well over 40 acres up there, not too far from this area. And of course, uh, I was hunting and I just enjoyed going there. Nice stand, very relaxing, beautiful. And then of course, Michael came. And right about uh, six weeks after Michael, I was able to work my way back in there and found my stand. It had been blown over, you know, which I sort of expected and a tree was on it. But I couldn't, I, I tried to lift it back up and put it in, put it in position. I just couldn't lift it by, my, by myself. So I said, well, I'll let it sit there. And then, of course, COVID last year, and we had all kinds of things. So I didn't get to hunt it last year. So a little while back, I, uh, well, before the season started, or, well, no, it was after the season started, around after Thanksgiving, really, right around Christmas, because I really wanted to hunt now. I worked my way back to my stand. I'm you know, looking on the ground for it. Folks, my stand is not laying on the ground. It's sitting up. I said, Lord, I know I believe in miracles and all, but I, I, you don't have to do this for me. And I, I'm talking to myself, and, and I, 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 I knew somebody had set it up there, but I, so I get up to it, and I, there's a chair that was sitting in it, and somebody had lifted my stand up and was hunting out of my stand. They were not there, of course, but this chair was, was facing up there. So I, I come back home and get my posters and put a little poster sign up, give me some tape, and go back out there. And uh, I got a picture here, okay? This is, now this was laying on the ground, okay? And uh, that's, so anyway, this is, it had been blown over, but now somebody set it up. So I just hung my poster sign right there and put my name on it and my phone number. I was gonna give them the, you know, benefit of the doubt, you know, maybe with the trees blown over, they didn't see the boundary, the, the property boundary line. And, but uh, they probably should have known it wasn't their tree stand. Well, in fact, right, let me see. Here's here's a better picture of it. So I put my phone number and all that. This was about well, this was about before Christmas, and I hadn't heard from them yet. And so anyway, to add insult on injury, okay, I, and I sort of taped it off. And I, I I actually went up there and hunted in the other day just to say I hunted in it this year. But listen, they already planted. They planted a the rye patch and threw out some corn. They just made themselves a home. So uh, I just wanted to all to. Uh, that situation should not happen, and, and uh, you always try to be good neighbors and, and really want to help each other out. And it just as a courtesy, really, we should know our neighbors, our hunting neighbors. There's always a chance of you shooting a deer, wounding a deer, and that deer's going to go over on their property. And you want to be able to call them, hey, Johnny, uh, this is Winston. Uh, I, I wounded a deer, it's headed your way. Is it okay if I you know, go to, you know, try to help find them? 99% of the time they're going to say, yeah, and a lot of times they say, yeah, I'll come up there and help you. And that, that's the kind of relationship you want to have. And that's, that's what we all yearn for. So that's important you do that. But folks, respect people's border lines, their property. That property is special to them. It's nothing spectacular. But I, I use my money. I didn't, it wasn't given to me. I used my money. I worked hard for that. And I've always wanted a little piece of property. And that's my little 40 acres. And it's nothing, nothing fancy, but it, it's my property. And, <laughs> And uh, I've, I've taken people hunting on it before, and I, you know, but I don't want people trespassing on it. I know y'all know where I'm coming from, how I feel about it, and I know y'all feel the same way. So just be aware of that and, and uh, try to, if you can always prevent the problem ahead of time, uh, it, it's, it's better. So uh, we're hunting season winding down, but we're going to make sure we get it straightened up for next year. And I'll, tr I'll try to find out who owns that property or who's leasing it, whatever, and, uh, and uh, we'll uh, try to get it squared away. Okay, and also now, Let's go from something bad to something good. I want to add some names. Oh, this is funny too. Uh, I want to add these names right here. I got a text. Let me see if I can find it for you. 
Uh, uh, Tannis Khalil. Okay, let me see. Mm, I can't find it. I'll read it when, okay, I got it right here. Uh, okay, this is from Caleb Powell. Caleb Powell from Bruce. All right, there you go, Caleb. I'm putting your name in there, okay? So that's Caleb. And then Caleb, he sent me a, an email. He said, uh, Mr. Chester, Tannis Khalil, and this is Tannis right here. This is Tannis Khalil right here. Turned me on to Panhandle Outdoors. He is five minutes late to work every day because of your show. <laughs> Please put my name in your drawing. Thank you for the show. And this is Caleb Powell out of Bruce. And then Tana sent me the note, hey, Winston, thank you for the show. It just gets better every year. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I hope you're right. Please put my wife, uh, and she's on here too, Dion, uh, in here and in the pickle jar. Thank you, Miss Gail and Jeff, for all the time and work you put into Panhandle Outdoors. Tannis Khalil at Inlet Beach. So anyway, uh, here, here's the name right here. So what we're going to do, we're going to... Uh, we're gonna give something away, and I'm gonna. It's gonna be a special little giveaway, almost a spur of the moment. But we're gonna give away right for this break. So let's, let's take a break, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's go ahead and get ready for a giveaway. Before we do that, let's give our fishing game times today. Brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers. Looking at time this morning: 12:51 or 2:51, and this evening one. 16 to actually uh, 316, a two hour block right there. Okay, let's get ready for the giveaway. Now, I've added a name, got a pickle jar here. I'm gonna put it right here for now. And I'm gonna show you what we're giving away. A couple of visors, Abu Garcia, Shakespeare. Okay, check this out right here. Shakespeare, Abu, that's one, one thing right there. How about a mystery tackle box? I just, oh, Jeff, I just opened it. Jeff was giving me the time. I had like 30 seconds. And anyway, the mystery tackle box. I won't go through all the items. But look at here. Hooks. Man, that's good stuff right there. Oh, Owl's goldfish. This right here is something cool. Owl's goldfish. That'll catch a fish. I said I wasn't going to go through everything, but that's some good stuff. Look at all these tackles. Look at here. Boom, boom, boom. This. All this in here. Okay, this is all part of the giveaway. Just a pan out outdoors. Special giveaway. And let's see what is, let's give away. Also, let's give away a pair of our floating pliers and Thomas Howell's book, Why the Woods Taught Me. What a great book. All of this is a package, our February giveaway package. I just sort of did it spontaneously. I put it together last night. And sort of, I said, why don't we give something away tomorrow? So I just went out there and got all my stuff together. And, and uh, this is good stuff. All right. And a winner. Of this package and now you can we can sort of get back in the studio you don't come inside a tv station but you ring the doorbell out here at fox 28 studio donna will come to the door her office is right by the door and she'll have the package for you she'll just hand it to you out the door so it'll work out great just run by and pick it up uh, i'll put it on her desk after the show i got a lot of entries i'm going uh, you can see we're starting them all up and the winner is going to be a 2020, I knocked those out, but I'm going to use one in my hand, okay? This is a 2022 first giveaway, and the winner is from Choctaw Beach, Jim Kelly. All right, Jim, we're going to put your name with it right here, all right? And let's put these folks back in here. Y'all will win next time, okay? All right, now, what, let me tell you this interesting news. Just getting this information, I don't know if it made local news or not. Guess what happened? Look at here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show it, uh, let's see. A great white shark has pinged. Okay, here we go. You know I do my shark tracker, I've showed it before. Great white shark, look at here, that's Tallahassee. Cape Sandblast, right there. Okay, so I, I hit on that dot. I said, what in the world is going on? What's, you know, this close this time of year, I ping on it, look at here, it pinged. This is a white shark, which we call a great white shark, this is a, a baby one, it's only 533 pounds, right at 10 foot long. <laughs> and uh, SeaWorld named him, they called him after the Nova Scotia explorer, John Cabot, so his name is Cabot. And it, it pinged, look here, what's that bottom line? Look at the bottom line, it pinged uh, January 29th. Hello, 10 a.m., hope y'all not out there surfing. Uh, and he's gotten closer, and this second ping was a lot closer. 
And the first ping was January the 8th, but 20, on 29th, he was a lot closer. And uh, look, here's his, right here in the center, that's where it's pinging twice. I'm gonna follow this path. Look, it goes down to here to Key West, then it goes up to here. Y'all still on that line up to Cape Fear, and then he cuts across actually into, what's this? He actually cut across into the, uh, into the middle of the Atlantic. Now, I, I try to show you his path anyway, but I got a picture of him. I actually took a picture. He don't look that mean right now out of the water, but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want to take a chance. Here he is. I got, I got his picture right here. His name is Cabot. He's already traveled. Is this not cool? He's already traveled 14,925 miles. So that, uh, that's them tagging him and putting a transmitter on him right there. And they got him, keep him in the water and all. Look at those eyes. That eye don't look really, he don't look, uh, he likes us. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, anyway, don't, I wouldn't go surfing or anything, uh, go swimming or, or snorkeling anytime, uh, anytime this time of the year around the Cape uh, or St. George Island, any of you folks down that way, cause you know, he'll go zigzag back and forth. So look at all the stuff you can find on Panhandle Outdoors. I've got some more stuff to talk about. I'm gonna run out of time, but, t but tomorrow we'll be giving our giveaway to Tarpanock Seafood. And uh, like these little spontaneous, uh, drawings, that's sort of how I like to do things that way, just all of a sudden do it. So we'll be, uh, for no special reason other than just we appreciate you uh, uh, as our viewer. And we really appreciate that. So we'll be giving you all, all kind of cool, I got all kind of cool stuff to give away. And it's going to be, a, yeah, that's good stuff. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. If you have any informa information you want us to share with other folks about any of the outdoor activities and all, the clubs or Pioneer Days and all that. I saw where Blunstown had theirs last week and no one told me about it. I wish I'd have talked about it more because they did some cool stuff and surviving in the outdoors and all. But uh, maybe next time they'll let us know, we'll share it with you. All right, y'all have a great day today. Do something good for your fellow man. Enjoy beautiful outdoors and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.